Now, now we come to an interesting section, which is the measurement of time, and it's very very uh, simple concept. Uh, but before we start doing into go delving into how to measure time, let's just understand what actually is time. See, the the time allows us to it, it comes the concept of time comes from the observation of changes. So if I observe the change, then I am defining the concept of time. If something changed, I can say that it changed over a period of time. So for example, here we have the universe which started from Big Bang. So our universe is evolving. And now we know that the galaxies and various stars and uh, all the constituents of the, of the universe are actually moving apart. They are uh, expanding. So the universe is kind of expanding. So this is the change in universe which actually gives us the concept of uh, time. Now, of course, the time as we know it, today only flows in one direction. So we know that the time only moves forward. And what does this forward really mean? So forward in the case of time actually means that there is an increase in entropy. So what is entropy? So increase in entropy. So entropy is the degree of randomness in any body. So for example, in the case of universe, it would be all the galaxies moving apart. So they are becoming, things are becoming more random, they are becoming more spread apart. So we say that the entropy of the universe is increasing and this increase in entropy happens how? It happens over a period of time. So this is the change I am observing and any change that I observe uh, at the same time, I am defining the concept of time. So now that we have defined what, uh, what, we, what do we actually mean, we got, got an intuitive feel of what actually we mean by time, uh, we now come to how do we measure time. See, any measurement of any physical quantity, we have already discussed this, is on a basis. So we define a basis on which, a basis for measurement and all other measurements actually use this basis as a reference. So for example, uh, in the case of uh, time, we have defined our basis to be the frequency of a very particular light emitted by cesium atoms. So cesium atoms, cesium-133 atoms specifically, they emit a very specific frequency of light. Okay. And of course, this is the one time period of this wave. There, there can be many such time periods I can put next to one another. How many time periods do I uh, actually put together? So if I put 9, so this is the wave emitted from the cesium atom. So this is my cesium atom. And if I put almost 9 billion such time periods uh, together, then I get 1 second. So that is how we have defined our time uh, to be that I take this particular frequency of the cesium atom. I measure its uh, time period of 1 a particular wave from cesium atom, I measure its time period and I put 9 billion such time periods next to each other and that I say, oh, okay, this would be my one second. And I've defined my one second to be like that. Okay, So all other clocks in the universe measure time on this uh, basis. So this is, what it, uh, this is what we mean when we say the frequency emitted by the atom. See, the atom actually has electrons. We know that. Electrons which are further away typically, which are further away from the nucleus have higher energy than those electrons which are near uh, the nucleus. So when the atom gets, when the electron get energy, they jump from the lower level to this higher level energy state. And when they come down, then they lose this energy in terms of photon. And these photons have very specific uh, frequencies. And in the case of, for example, this is the this is the case of a hydrogen atom. When the electron it comes down, for example, from this point to this point, it emits a radiation of 410 nanometers. So this is a very specific radiation. In the case of cesium atom, we are not taking these large energy jumps into account. Okay, so these are the large energy differences in electrons. But sometimes the electrons have very specific energy differences. For example. This is the large energy difference right here. This is the large energy difference between the electrons. So this is an electron which jumped from here to here. But in the case of cesium atom, we are not talking about this energy difference. We are talking about hyper fine energy differences, right? So this is the energy difference between the energy difference. Okay. So it is a hyper fine. So sometimes even within this particular level, we can observe 
two very small different energy levels of the electron that is what we are talking about uh, the hyper fine uh, the hyper fine energy states and it is in the case of cesium atom this is the jump we are talking about it is the jump between these two hyper fine levels not not these this large jump not this one not this one not the large jump but the small jump between these hyper fine levels and it is this jump which emits this particular frequency that we talked about and this is the frequency of the radiation emitted from the cesium atom the radiation caused by the jump of electron from the between the hyper fine levels this this frequency is what we use a frequency of this light is what we use to measure the time so hopefully this concept of uh, measurement is very very uh, clear now and also it is clear what do we mean by hyper fine levels these are not the normal energy levels but the within a same energy level we have slightly two distinguished different energy levels okay and that is the uh, energy difference we are talking about required to produce the electromagnetic radiation which we are interested in the case of the cesium atoms now that we have understood what it means by our, our our one second what does it really mean by our one second okay and martians might use a com completely a uh, different uh, one second um, but for us that is what it means we can now describe in terms of that one second that we have the various ranges of time and as you can see the ranges of time are very large from the age of universe which is of order of 10 raised to power 17 uh, to the very very small which is the time taken by the lights like various kinds of lights time taken by the nuclear uh, reactions to happen those are very very small times so we can measure all of those things and which kind of says how much technologically advanced we have now become now another thing which has been described in your book is that if you look at the order of the various observable phenomena for example the order of lengths that you can typically see typically measure not the very small orders of length uh, like in atom or in the in the nucleus but typically what we see uh, and the astronomical lens of course measures of any of these uh, phenomena length time mass you will see that the smallest order to largest order there is a difference of 10 raised to power 40 so typically there is a difference of 40 orders of magnitude and this is what was the Dirac's so Paul Dirac was a scientist and of course he was a very uh, famous scientist he has, has numerous uh, uh, are discoveries to his name but one of the things that he was interested in in, in his uh, uh, free time it was his hobby <laughs> so if you will uh, to look at these various uh, constants that occur in nature and try to form, find out why things are like this right? for example we are talking about gravitational constant we already know what it is but Dirac was why is the gravitational constant uh, what it is so those kind of questions he was interested in and one of the things that he noticed was the there is always 40 orders of magnitude difference between the smallest thing we can see and the largest things that we observe in the uh, typically in the universe so based on based on that he people are uh, have done several researches and they have, they have said that oh this this is just not uh, just just uh, a coincidence that this happens to be that way but uh, some people have said that it is very important uh, for for our universe to work as it is working that things be like this so for example this 40 orders of magnitude difference that you're saying is not just coincidence it is it is how it was supposed uh, to be and similarly he he came up with other things also for example the gravity and the gravitational constant he said was it was inversely proportional to the age of the universe now this could be a coincidence but it could also be important for our universe i mean this is how our universe has to be for it to function uh, similarly he came up with the mass of the universe and that is proportional to the squares of, of universe range. and he, he came up with various other such relations which of course with the internet now you can uh, you look it up if you are interested in, in such numbers but this was just a, a brief introduction to get you uh, interested now of course uh, with this we come to an end and we will be solving some numericals and in the next class we would be discussing the significant figures which are very very important and question on significant figures is guaranteed so do practice questions doorstep if you have doubt do uh, put those in the comments and we'll be happy to help you thank you